tonight for this, our Zoom Teachers Conference. Put your hands together. Everybody just wave at each other. We're excited to be here. We're just so delighted to be with our sister church and our own Pastor Shemaine Lashley and Grace United Methodist Church. It is good to see you. We are so glad you thought it not robbery to tune in tonight for another wonderful meal from our own beloved bishop, the Reverend Dr. Jacqueline E. McCullough. We are so delighted. Won't you just give, your, give God a hand clap of praise for the bishop tonight and be start to pray for her right now. She came in with a hmm, and when she says that, she's usually getting ready to drop some bombs. So we're excited about her tonight, and we're just excited about being together as we, as we sit around the table to be fed. We just want you to know we, we love you, and we embrace you, and we just thank God for you tonight. All the Beth Raphaites, all of the uh, members of the Rafa Alliance, Rafa Alliance churches that are in with us tonight, and Grace United, we just are one big happy family this evening, and we're just excited about what God is about to do. Aren't you excited? I've been waiting for this all day, all day long, and I am excited. So we just thank God. I want to yield to my sister in Christ, uh, to our, our beloved pastor, sister, and friend, our dear Pastor Shemaine Lashley, who is hosting tonight. With, you, with Grace United Methodist Church. Won't you just receive Pastor Lashley so she gives us remarks before we get started. That's good. That's mm -hmm. good. Praise the Lord, everybody. I am so, there's a big sign for me. I'm so excited for tonight. I want to thank God for Bishop McCalla and for the vision that he's put in her heart that he, that will not stop even in the midst of a pandemic. We thank God that even though the doors of the building are closed, that the church of Jesus Christ is still open. So I want to welcome everyone, you know, to this wonderful time of feasting on the word of God. And I hope you came with an appetite. I thank God for all of the members of grace. Some of them are listening on the phone tonight. Amen. And some of them are uh, streaming. I want to thank God for those who are the, the, um, the Rafa Alliance, everybody. And I just want to say, be prepared and be ready for God to make another deposit. Bishop is no stranger to us. We're family, amen. And I'm so glad for social media that allows family to still come together over the meal, the feast of the word of God. God bless you. I'm ready to feast and I hope you are too. Welcome again. Thank you so much, Pastor Lashley and and from Precious Gem Ministries and Beth Rafa Christian College and Theological Seminary, we just humbly welcome all of you tonight to our service. And we just ask that you get your pens and paper ready. But before we start taking notes and sit at the feet of our bishop, we're going to have a praise and worship led by our own dearest Overseer Robin Edwards. It's in your hands, Overseer. Amen, amen. Let's come on and get our spirits ready for the word of God and soften for the word of God. We're just gonna sing a love song to him at this point and talk about how much he loves us tonight. All right, come on and just lift our hands towards heaven's way and just, just begin to just think on his goodness. So you can get, you know, as Reverend Pat always says, let's get tender before the Lord, amen? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. The words are going to be on the screen. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. I really love the Lord. I really love the Lord. You don't know what he's done for me. He gave me the victory. I love him. I love him. I really love the Lord. Yes, I really love the Lord. I really 
I love him. I really love the Lord. Come on, sing. I really love the Lord. I really love the Lord. You don't know what he's done for me. He gave me the victory. I love him, I love him, I really love the Lord. Yes, you don't know what he's done for me. He gave me the victory. I love him. I love him, I really love the Lord. I love him, I love him, I really love the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Come on and thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless his name. Thank Bless you. His name. Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly. While the nearer waters roll, while the tempest still is high, I kneel, my Savior, till the storm of life is past. Say to the heaven guide oh receive my soul at last other refuge have I none hangs my helpless soul on thee leave I leave me not support and comfort me. All my trust on thee is saved. All my help from thee I bring. Come on my defenseless head with the shadow of thy wings. Thou, O Christ, art all I want, more than all in thee I find. Praise the fallen, cheer the faint, heal the sick, and lead the blind. Just and holy is thy name. I am all in righteousness, false and full of sin. 
rise to all eternity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on and lift your hands and glorify him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your matchless name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank the Lord for putting his, the songs in the atmosphere and for putting us in the spirit of praise and worship and for setting the atmosphere for the word of God to come forth. Won't you just give God a hand clap of praise and praise him one more time as we prepare to receive our meal tonight from our own bishop. Uh, before we get started with our teaching, we'd like to share with you just a few announcements that we thought were very important that you might find very beneficial as we move forward in our teachers conference for the evening. Media. We are happy to announce the release of our latest Beth Rafa book entitled Christian Discipleship 101. Don't skip this class. This book was written from six sermon messages on Christian discipleship by our own beloved Bishop Jacqueline E. McCullough. Becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ requires a courageous transformation of life, abandonment of cultural paradigms, and death to self. It demands real exposure of the heart and removes the prideful, arrogant entitlements packaged in our minds. This is why becoming a disciple is not a heralded position in the church. But you can't skip this class. Embrace this journey designed to strip away unnecessary weights and fulfill your life in Christ. Also available for purchase from Beth Rafa Books, Vanity, the futility of a self-absorbed life. Stated in the words of our beloved bishop, vanity is something of no true value. It is meaningless and always ends in unsatisfactory results because it focuses on material things and capable of yielding lasting returns. Instead of spending a lifetime chasing unfruitful pursuits that yield no lasting joy and peace, overcome vanity by chasing the character of God and truly learning to love your neighbor as yourself. This book will teach you how to abandon the clutches of a self-absorbed life concerned only with personal pleasure and profit. Instead, it will lead you into a godly, selfless lifestyle focused on extending our Father's love and kindness to others before considering yourself. Both books may be purchased on Amazon.com. We are asking you to support sales by purchasing copies for friends and family. For those who feel compelled, please submit a review on Amazon.com, which will also help in the promotion of sales. For those who feel compelled, please submit a review on Amazon, which will also help in the promotion of sales. And remember, all proceeds go to Beth Rafa. Beth Rafa Christian College and Theological Seminary is an exciting online college experience that will greatly enhance your knowledge of the Lord and His Word. We offer certificate, bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees in Christian education, biblical counseling, theology and ministry, and prayer and missions. Our summer quarter begins on Monday, July 20th. The fall quarter starts on Monday, October 5th. Registration for classes is always two weeks prior to the beginning of the quarter. The application process and classes are all online. The instruction is excellent and the tuition is affordable. For more information about BRCC, please visit our website. We look forward to hearing from you soon. We are happy to announce the release. Thank you so much for those announcements and we encourage you to visit our Beth Rafa Seminary website at your leisure and, and join us for classes. Speaking of which, it's time to bring on our bishop and we'd like to present her to some and introduce her to others. Uh, at this time, I'm going to yield to our uh, electronic biography of our beloved bishop and sit back, turn your cups up, get your pens and pencils ready and, and enjoy the meal for tonight. Thank you. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. 
The Reverend Dr. Jacqueline E. McCullough has an unwavering commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, the integrity of his holy word, and a love for his people. Dr. McCullough, a native of Kingston, Jamaica, is the senior pastor and founder of the International Gathering at Beth Rafa in Pomona, New York. Her vision for evangelistic ministry is expressed in the international outreach of Precious Gem Ministries, a nonprofit religious organization where she serves as founder and president. She is also the proud founder and president of the Beth Rafa Christian College and Theological Seminary with the headquartered campus located in Tampa, Florida. Dr. McCullough was elevated to the office of the bishopric in August 2015. She was also awarded her Doctorate of Ministry from Drew Theological Seminary and currently holds a Master's of Arts and Philosophy from New York University. She has also engaged in postgraduate studies at the Jewish Theological Seminary. In addition to her pastoral duties, Bishop McCullough oversees the Rafa Alliance, currently comprised of over 20 churches under her overseership and tutelage. She also spearheads the Word Alive Medical Missions, which has provided free medical Medical services to over 30,000 people in the parishes throughout the island of Jamaica and Monrovia, Liberia. Her compassion for God's people is further witnessed in her home, where she has extended her care to numerous spiritual sons, daughters, and grandchildren. Amid all of this, Bishop has authored five books, 105 Days of Prayer, Satisfaction of the Soul, a devotional entitled Daily Moments with God in Quietness and Confidence, The Other Side of This, and her latest book, I Hate My Life, released in August 2019. Along with her books, she has released two praise and worship CDs entitled This Is For You, Lord, and A New Sound. Bishop McCullough is featured in the book Messengers by David Ritz as one of the leading ministers of our time. Join us in welcoming her Grace, Bishop Jacqueline E. McCullough of the International Gathering at Beth Rafa in Pomona, New York. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you. It's always good to be with the Church of the Living God. I salute my sister and friend and co-laborer in the gospel, Pastor Shemaine Lashley and all of the members of Grace United Methodist Church. You know I love you. Amen. And it's so good to be with you. Thank you for opening the doors of your church. Thank you for allowing us to just be a part and to share the word and to, to sit around the word together. Amen. I really salute um, all of the, the leaders, particularly Overseer Robin Edwards. It's good to have her who is functioning as praise leader tonight. I thank you so much. And of course, I salute um, the Reverend Dr. Trish McLeod, who is really one of the most um, um, passionate person when it comes to teaching, getting the word out. Amen. Vice president of the college. And she's just really on fire. She's so passionate about the word that she takes the, the word and the ministry, compiles it, edits it, and puts out books that will be part of the college's library and should be part of your library. Amen. You need to know what discipleship is. Don't let in, it intimidate you. Don't let that word drive you away or don't let it get turned off. You understand? I know we should have had a book that says blessed and highly favored and need a new car, but I'm telling you, discipleship is the way to go. You get those two books, Discipleship and Vanity, and you will not be duped. You will not be bamboozled. You will know what it means, what really matters when it comes to your Christian war. Amen? And so when a pandemic comes, you won't panic. When a pandemic comes, you won't give up your faith. When a pandemic comes, you'll be able to ride the storm. So thank you so much, Reverend Trish. I thank the intercessory prayer team. You're always such a wonderful team of people. Can't do this without prayer. Cannot do this without prayer. So thank you, thank you, thank you. The remnant women, I see you. The Lord bless you, the Lord love you, and the Lord is getting ready to use you. All right, here we go. Okay, um, you know, before I got on tonight, I got a call from a young lady, and I know she wouldn't mind me saying this, but she was, you know, she, she said she's been in church, and she heard the message I preached on Sunday about being forgiven, that God is a God of forgiveness. And she says, in all the years 
she battled, but she felt that she was forgiven on Sunday. It's finally, the message finally got to her heart. So some of you out there may have been in church and, and you've been a part of the church, but you're depressed, you're frustrated, you're in church, you're out of church, you want God and you feel like you're not worthy. Just hang in there with this teaching on justification and you're gonna walk away as this young lady free, delivered and happy that she doesn't have to be perfect for God to want her. And when he wants us, he makes us what we ought to be. So please take a deep breath and relax. This could be a life-changing night for you wherever you are. Amen. So we're going to follow the screen. We're going to start off with a video, the first video, Pastor Dan. Thank you so much for being with us. In the 2012 movie, Batman Returns, one of Catwoman's driving motivations was her desire for a clean slate. As you might imagine, she has a pretty sordid history as an international cat burglar, and like all of us in the age of social media, every detail of her life is on record somewhere on the World Wide Web, making it impossible for her to escape the past. But word on the streets of Gotham is that someone has developed a powerful computer program called The Clean Slate, which will erase your entire internet record from every database on the planet it, all with a simple click of a single button. And for reasons that are perhaps obvious, Catwoman would do anything to get her hands on it. In this respect, Catwoman is more than just a comic book supervillain. She is also a metaphor for us all. At least, the way data about us accumulates on the internet until it starts to define us and control us is one of the growing social issues of our day. Harvard professor Jonathan Zittrain uses the term reputational bankruptcy to talk about all this. The web never forgets he reminds us, and as more and more of our lives are lived online, it becomes increasingly difficult to escape the impact of our digital footprints. What we need, as a train argues, is some way to declare reputational bankruptcy and start over. Like if the internet allowed you a one-time pulling of a lever that would delete your digital identity and you could just start fresh. The concept of reputational bankruptcy is a helpful image for something the Bible calls justification by faith. The idea is that we are justified before God, not by works, keeping the Old Testament law or adhering to some human-defined moral code, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Strictly speaking, the term justification is a legal term that describes a judge rendering a not guilty verdict in a court of law. To be justified is to be declared not guilty. But what exactly does this mean? How does God declare us not guilty on the basis of our faith in Christ? And what does this justification actually look like for us in real life? Well, this is where the clean slate comes in handy, because in the same way that all the digital data that's accumulated about us on the internet has all sorts of implications for our present, impacting our ability to get a job, to secure a bank loan, to get a date, and so on, so much so that our digital identity can come to define us in all sorts of unhealthy ways, so too with sin. Biblically, sin is not just about the moral failings of the past that need forgiveness, it is also about how these moral failings define us and have all sorts of implications for our present, our ability to serve God, our ability to commune with Him, our ability to take our place as one of His people. We don't just need forgiveness, we need a brand new spiritual identity. And justification by faith is for our spiritual identities what the clean slate is to our digital identities. On the cross, Christ stands in our place as our fully human representative, and through his own death, he puts to death the entire sin record of our lives. He canceled the accusation that stood against us, is how the Bible puts it, nailing it to the cross. Through his own death, he wipes the slate clean, and then through his resurrection on the other side, he offers us a brand new identity to live, united with his resurrection directed life. In a very real way, putting our faith in Christ is like declaring reputational bankruptcy and so allowing God to justify us, to wipe the record clean so that Christ's identity can now define us. And like it says in one place, having been justified like this through faith, we now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Reputational bankruptcy. You know what I'm saying? That means that we came to God and we needed a clean slate and we needed a fresh identity. There's some things that many of you may not ever talk to anybody about because it's so horrible. And if anyone found out what you did, they probably wouldn't even want to talk to you. That's what we mean by reputational bankruptcy. 
There's some secret things, whether we did it, we probably thought it or felt it, or it's still lurking in our minds. And so we need to have a new reputation, a new identity. It's like going into our system and taking out the whole, the, the old genetic makeup and giving us some new genes that we can live for God. So let's see what that means. I mean, we could just stop here and not teach because he, he did it all in a nutshell. So I'm not going to just overwhelm you. I'm just going to piggyback on what he just said and just try to bring some definition so you will have it etched in your spirit. So when the enemy tells you you're no good, you're not forgiven, you're guilty, and you're horrible, all of those things are true. But thanks be to God, we have a new identity. Amen. So what does justification mean? And you need to know this. Let me say to you, you need to know this. Listen, it is not this cliche, deal with my symptoms teaching. And we like those kind of quickie things, you know, um, how, how, to, how to do something, you know, on your own and how to fix a pipe instead of calling the plumber. And in, in, in another minute, the pipe is busted because it was more than just a pipe. It was a whole thing that you don't know anything about. How to do this, how to do that. Because we like those quickie one, two, three, symptomatic kind of stuff. But here is justification being taught so that you can have something to anchor you. You understand that when the trends change, and they do change, and when the cliche gets old, you will have something solid to say, oh my God. I don't have to live with the torment of my past because I am justified, all right? So justified to do, to, justification means to be declared righteous. To justify means to declare righteous. So the Hebrew word just tells us it's, it's, it's an announcement. It's a pronouncement. It's a favorable verdict. Here I am standing in front of the judge and I am guilty, guilty, guilty. All the evidence is stacked against me. You know, there, there's no way I could get out of this. I deserve a life sentence. And instead of getting a life sentence or even three days in the jail, the judge looks at me and says, I am pronouncing you not guilty. Now, Let's not get it crazy. Let's not get it twisted. I am guilty. You understand? I did go in and eat all the cookies, every bit of it. And you know how, you know, now everybody know I ate the cookies? I forgot to wipe my mouth. Because you see, when we mess up like that, we don't clean up well. We, we still have stuff hanging on. We just think we get away. But the crumbs are all around. You understand? The, 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 the evidence is there. It's not, it's not imagined. It's not that uh, um, they're accusing me of doing something and I didn't do it. I am guilty. Yet he looks at me and says, I declare you innocent. What, 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 kind of, what kind of judge is this? What kind of God is this? The next slide, please. And it's a divine act. Now listen. This is not something that's pronounced by your friends. This is not something that's pronounced by any earthly court or judicial system. This is not going to be pronounced by your mother. You're guilty, you're going to get a whipping. That's all there is. That, that, you know, you, you did it, expect a whipping. Just expect it. You don't hear your mother or father getting ready to say, I know you did it, sweetheart, but you're, you know, you're, you're, you're sweet and you're innocent and you're fine and I love you just like that even though you did whatever you did. No, no, you're not going to hear that from humans. Humans don't have the power to do this. Only one being has the power to declare you guilt, to declare you innocent, even though you are a sinner. A sinner means that you were born not wanting God. You were born with no ability in you, in your nature, in your thought, in your feeling of wanting God, wanting to serve God, wanting to obey God. And everything you do offends him. He says, don't go here and you go. He says, keep your mouth shut and your mouth keep running. He said, give that up and you go and get some more. We were born with that. It's all in us. It's all in us. But in spite of all of that, 
even though we are an offense to his holiness, even though we don't want to do right and we don't have a do right mind. No, you don't. You don't have a do right mind. Don't get offended. You don't have a do right mind. Cross you and you will find out you don't have a do right mind. But in spite of the fact we don't have the right mind towards him, towards ourselves and towards our fellow per people or towards our neighbor, he still looks at us and says, you are now innocent. And not only innocent, he says, I am righteous. Oh, come on. Is something wrong with God here? How could he call me, me? I mean, come on. How could he call, how could he call us righteous? Righteous. When I don't have righteous thoughts, righteous, you know what I'm saying? When I don't have righteous words, righteous. When I don't have righteous behavior, how could he look at me in my present state and say to me, you're innocent? Not because I didn't do it. He's just pronouncing it. He's announcing to the world, she's innocent. All right, now, how do I become righteous? There's something has to happen for, my, for me to leave that state of committing sin, of living in sin, of wanting to sin, of liking to sin, of enjoying sin, of calling others to sin with me. How, how, how do I get past that? Something has to happen for me. I can't do it for myself. He declares. Now, because he declares you righteous, innocent, and because he declares me innocent, doesn't mean I am innocent. I have to now become righteous. And I can't become righteous on my own. Somebody has to do something to bring me into the consciousness of righteousness. So Jesus died on the cross because he is righteous. He was born righteous. He lived righteous. He walked the streets of Galilee righteous. There's no sin in him. His blood is different from my blood. In intrinsic in his blood cell is the power to forgive me of my sin, to wash away my sin. He's got special type of blood and it's not old. Well, you know, the CDC says that there are certain types of people that are not prone to get the COVID-19. And that's the people with type O blood. That's what they're saying. It could be theory or speculation. So they have a special type of blood. Even a type O blood could not save us from sin. I don't care what kind of blood you have, you are still going to be going in the wrong direction, missing the mark, doing your own thing, forgetting that there is a God, ignoring his word, ignoring his law, acting as if he is not the true and the living God, doing things against his word, against ourselves, against others, all of that, all of that, all of that. So how do I become from innocent to righteous? From innocent to righteous. See, I, 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 you can declare somebody innocent. See, you can go to the next slide. You can declare somebody innocent and, and you know, they, 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 they walk out the courtroom and go right back and commit the same crime. Because even though the judge gave them a chance and released them, something on the inside has not been changed. How many times have you seen people, you know, pick people up and dress them and put on the right clothes and, you know, put them in a certain home and, and, and send them to school and they got an education and they got a good job and they're still a hustler still a line conniving hustler. Now there used to be a hustler on the street corner and they, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, if you can remember, you walk on 42nd street or even, I used to hang on 125th street in Harlem and they always had these guys with these cards, you know, on the street. And, and they, you, you had to gamble and whatever hustling, trying to make a quick buck, you know, street side hustlers. That's what we were, hustlers. You know what I'm saying? How, how do you take somebody like that and change them just by putting on a suit, getting a hairdo, getting your nails done, you know, getting all, you know, done up and then give you a degree, give you a, a master's degree 
and then put you in a nice house on the and you still stealing and still lie. Now you went from street hustling to white collar. It's in us. Just listen, just say it. What what is wrong with just saying? I, I, I'm not I'm not innocent, but he's declaring me innocent. That's the thing that makes us love him so much. Now, if you still messing with your mind and saying ain't nothing wrong with you, then you can't appreciate God. You don't even want to hear this. You want you you done almost clicked off. But when you know that in your heart you are not innocent, I am not innocent. I have the potential. The propensity, you understand? The, the, the bend, the bend to do wicked things. Oh, yes. And yet he stands me up before the world and before angels. And he says, hey, you see that McCullough? Yeah, you saw what she did. You know what she did, whatever. But I am declaring her not guilty. I'm declaring her innocent. Everybody say, what? What? Do you know what she did? What? How can you declare her not guilty? Not only am I going to declare her innocent, but I am going to give her righteousness. My son is going to die on the cross and superimpose his righteousness into her so that she will have the ability to do right. What? You mean she's not going to be cussing anymore? What? You mean that she's not going to be pulling no weapon and talking about she's strapped? What? You mean that she's not going to be cutting throat and stabbing back and doing all the kind of stuff? You, you mean that's possible? It's possible for her not only to be declared not guilty, but to have a mind to live right? How is that possible? So let's read 1 Corinthians 1, 29 through 30. I wish I had a reader. Somebody can read it from the screen nice and loud. It begins the reading of God's holy word, that no flesh shall glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So, I am not right because I want right, I like right, I do right. I am right because who I'm hooked up with. I'm hooked up with somebody. Somebody, somebody has the ability to do right that I don't have that ability. But because he is in me now and because I accept him as my savior and the finished work of Calvary, I have what he offers. He drops it in, not on top of me. I'm not righteous because I, I, I have something on my head or I wear a certain dress or, you know, I have my hands a certain way. I'm not talking about looking and, and acting a certain way. I'm talking about inside, inside, inside. That's where the problem is, inside, inside, inside. That's where the anger is, inside, inside. That's where the, the, the anxiety is, inside. That's where the jealousy, inside, inside, inside. That's where the hate and the murder all these things that we're seeing in, in our society, it's not outside. It's not, it's not just the laws. It's in the person. Even if you change the books, if, it's, if the persons are not changed on the inside, they'll find ways of breaking the law. You do the same thing. Come on. How many tickets do you have to get to stop running the red light? How many? How many? How many? How many? How many? What? They almost repossess the car. How many times you got to go before the judge and make up some story? You didn't see the light and the, and, and the cops gave you a ticket and it wasn't there. You know, you know, you run that light all the time and act like you don't see that the light is red and not green. It's in us to, to circumvent rules. It's in us to not want to have any kind of order. It's in us. Not to want to live a certain way, holy and righteous and just. It's in us. We find all kinds of ways, 
Oh, come on, you know what I'm saying? Come on, you 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 know they're giving out these stimulus checks, and you know you you know you lie. Some of us lie to get this little bit of money. We do all kinds of things, all kinds of things to get by, and and, and yet raise our hands on on, on, on church service and crying and cry. It's in us to find all kinds of ways to live our lives against God. So we can't do it on our own. Stop trying to do it on your own. Stop trying to make, you know, these rules for yourself. Well, you know, I, I did it and I know it's wrong and, and, and I'm not going to do it anymore. And I'm not going to hang out with those people anymore. And I'm going to give it up. No, you're not going to give it up. You like it too much. You, you enjoy it too much. Just say the truth. Just say you like it, you enjoy it. You know, it, it's sweet to your flesh. You understand? You, 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 you like, you know, some people just like to, to curse. I don't know why I'm on cursing tonight. Maybe, maybe something going on. But, but, but you, you like to curse. There, you, there's no other way that you can talk to somebody without every other, you know, um, how they put it on, on, on the screen, no other number sign, all these number signs. To, to, to let everybody know, you know, what you really want to say. You enjoy it. You fix your, the way you fix your mouth to say it, it's like you're eating candy. You just like to fix your, roll your tongue. And it, it's, it comes out of a bitter, angry heart. So just don't lie. Stop lying. I'm going to cut all of the lesson tonight and just get real. We like to pretend that our righteousness comes from us. There's nothing in me that wants to do right by God, by myself, by my family, even by your children. You understand? How many times, you know, you, you, you wish you could just throw them across the room? And some of you do, especially in this pandemic, when you see them every day, you know, and you have to teach them and you didn't want to be taught yourself. You know what I'm saying? You, you, when you were in school, you didn't listen to the teacher. And now the Lord make it so that your kids won't even listen to you. you. You know how things come around. So many things about us that we cover up. And, and, I, and I, I think this justification, just to take the cover off. It's all right. I know you naked. I know you, you rude and nasty. I know you fresh. I know you out of order. I know you don't want to get it right. I know all of that. But I still want you. That's amazing to me. It's amazing grace. We sing it and we don't feel it, but we better start singing it. And it's amazing that he would want me. It's amazing that he don't bring up stuff. It's amazing that my rap sheet is clean in heaven. It's amazing. He cast my sins in the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered. It's a, aren't you amazed with that? I don't know what amazes you, but it's amazing that he could look at me past, present, and guess this, future, and say to me, to the angels, to the demons, and all of you all, all of you all, all of you all, that, that know my stuff, all of you all, all of you all, and say to all of you all, she's innocent, and, and here, here, she has me in her life, so she is, in my eyes, she is righteous. And she can come to me anytime. And she can call me Papa anytime. And I will receive her anytime. But, but, but God, you don't know. You know, you don't know who she is. You don't know. Listen, if God came to you to get a report on us, on each other, and the what we would tell him, cross her off the book, throw her away. You know, you don't know. I I I know the inside story. I know where she's been. Listen. God's attitude is, and where have you been? Come on, come on, check yourself. Check yourself, check yourself, check yourself. Where have you been? And he still wants you. Get it in your spirit. You know why? Because when you fail or when you make a mistake, you won't be so spiritually suicidal. You won't feel like, oh, can't go back to church. Oh, you know, oh, you'll realize that first of all, one point in time in your life, he declared you innocent and then sent his son to give you his righteousness because he knows you don't have any. When you have Jesus, you have his righteousness. 
you don't, you know, you're not, it, just because you're proper, it doesn't mean you're right. Because uh, some of the most proper people are the most rude people in the world. Have you ever met proper rude? What? They're proper and they're insulting. They're, they're proper and they're nasty. They're proper and they're sarcastic. Properly rude. Jesus have mercy. So we're not talking about proper. We're not talking about refined. Because we, believe it or not, people equate goodness and greatness with all of these, these external things. I'm refined. I went to finishing school. You know, if you, when you grow up in certain cultures, you know, there's certain things that they stress that you, you, they send their children to finishing school. You know, they'll squeeze the money to send them to finishing school so they could be finished. And the kids come out, you know, with, as rebels having two and three illegitimate babies. That's what they that's what they went to school to do to finish. When they came out, they were finished. You know what I'm saying? They went and got all of that, all of that money they spent. And when the kids came out, you don't even know who they are. All I'm saying is stop it. Stop trying to be right. Stop trying to be perfect. Stop trying to hold up the sign. That's not me. Yes, it is me. If it had not been for the Lord, it could have been me. That's what you have to say. And you know, you know when, when one of the things that we, and I'm, I'm finished because you know, ain't no use getting deep with this. Listen, one of the things that we do when people challenge us and, and say something to us, correction, discipline, whatever, we get so upset as if it's not possible. As if, you know, as if some strange thing, this is a, you, you, you're accusing me of some strange disease. You know, like lying is a strange disease. It's a common assault. You understand? Like backbiting is so strange and gossiping is so strange and, you know, stealing is so strange and, 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 and uh, division is so strange. What, what? It's natural. Did I say it's natural? It comes quick. You know, instead of coming out kind, you come out ready to cut the jugular. You have to catch yourself. Righteousness has to grab. Jesus has to, he's like, oh, okay, all right. It, that is not natural. There is nothing natural about being righteous, being honest. There's nothing natural about wanting to pray, wanting to read your Bible, wanting to do the will of God, wanting to wait on God, wanting to trust God, wanting to keep your pants up. Did I say pants up? I did say pants up, you know. I did say that. It's not natural. It's not natural to do it in this pandemic when the, 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 the states are opening it up. People are doing things with a vengeance. That's why they're worried about a second wave of the virus. Because people are saying, oh, you kept me inside. Now I'm free. I can do all that I was planning. I, I couldn't do it in February. I couldn't do it in March. I was in prison in April. And I couldn't do it in May. Now you're going to tell me that when I open up that I can't do it? No, because it's in us to do it. So don't, don't sit up in church and think the preacher preaching on you. You self-righteous religious people that come from a certain, you know, background where you sing a hymn, five, five stanzas in the hymn and, and form your mouth a certain way and think that's holiness. No, 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 no. When you're unrighteous, you, 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 you cut throat, you, 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 you backbite, you slander, you, you, you do all that stuff. Why are you saying that about me? I'm a good person. In this pandemic, I drop food at people's house. I, I call people. I visit people. You know, if they're sick, I put the mask on and go by the door and distance and give them the milk and the cookie. I'm such a good person. How dare you call me unrighteous? I didn't, I, darling, I didn't call you unrighteous. Jesus did. That's why he had to die. Now tell me. Would Jesus come down and die for people who already got it together? Why would he do that? Come on. He's, he's, not, he's not masochistic. He's, he's not trying to do things to himself. No. Why would he come all the way down? 
out of glory, out of glory, out of glory. Come straight down out of glory to this sin-cursed earth where there's sickness and pain and disease and demonic activity and hatred and broken heart and imprisoned people and come all the way down and take on human flesh and hang out with hateful people and touch people and heal them. Why would he need to come? Why do you go to the hospital if ain't nothing wrong with you? Why, why, are you, why are you sitting up? Listen, my my mother and father, you know, I think that God bless their, them. They already blessed, but, you know, they're with the Lord. But, you know, they used to go to this doctor, this special doctor. He was from Jamaica. So all the Jamaicans used to find him. Dr. Stevenson, he's, he's gone on. He's not here. But, you know, you would go in the office and, you know, you would meet everybody from every part of the parishes in Jamaica. It was a big gathering of parishes. And you start hearing stories about this one and that one. So my father, you know, walks in because, you know, he's, he used to be a tall, handsome man. And so when he walks in, his priest has a lot of presence. You know what I'm saying? So when he walks in, he nods his head. They think the Pope is coming in there. So he walks in and he takes over the whole room, takes over the whole room. And now uh, everybody ready to tell him their story. So, so the, the, this lady came in and, and the doctor saw her and she walks out and my father says, and how are you today? Are you okay? Listen to me. You would think that you had to call the EMS. Jeez. There's a wailing. There's a wailing. Suddenly she's she's having a heart attack. Something, something. And she's laying out. Now she's laying. Now she just came out of the doctor's office walking. Walking. Nothing wrong with her. But all of a sudden, it's a major emergency. You see what I'm saying? All he had to do was create a situation. And some of us, some of us live like that. We live with this whole situation of deception and guilt and drama. We don't want to be healed. We don't want, we don't want the truth. We don't want to walk in a righteous way. We don't want to walk in a way where we are close to God and intimate. We want to live and wallow and wallow. You don't have to live like that. You don't have to wallow like a pig in the mud, like a dog in his vomit. You understand? One of the things I can't stand about my, 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 my dog, I had a Yorkie. And every time, you know, he, he spit up, we would go, I said, I'll hurt you. Move away from there. Get out of that vomit. Because they'll go back and lick their vomit, even though they just spit it up. Why do you have to live in your vomit when God has set you free? <laughs> My God, you're, you're living beneath your privilege. You are declared innocent. You are declared righteous, not because you do anything right, but because you receive Jesus. He hung on the cross to make it right. He shed his blood to make it right. He rose from the dead to make it right. He lives in heaven to make it right. If you believe, if you, by faith, justification is by faith. If you believe that your sins are forgiven, if you believe that he died just for you, just for you, just for you, it's personal. If he died just for you, in spite of you, you don't have to settle. Yes, I used to wallow in the mud. Yes, I used to wake up feeling torn and tossed and tattered. Yes, I used to live a life of guilt. Because even after we do things, even if we're not saved, we do have a conscience. We, we, we know when, you know, we know when we're not right. We know, you know, we might try to get over. But justification says, hold up. I know that you are not right, but I want you. Look, look at the people that Jesus went after. A little short man named Jacques. He was a thief and a hustler. You understand? He stole money. He overcharged people. You know, it, it's like, it's like the, you know, the IRS. Many of you are in trouble with the IRS. You know how it is. You know how it is. Yeah. But Jesus stood up under a tree. This little short man got up in a tree just to look, just to be a spectator. And Jesus said, I'm coming to your house. Of all the people, why would you want to be bothered with a short thief and a hustler? Why? Well, why would you even invest your time? Jesus, you ain't got nothing to do. You, you got all these people out here, all these good people, all these smart people, all these intelligent people, and you gonna stand up under a tree and call a man that nobody likes. And said, when I get through with you, you're going to do right. 
Oh, Lord, have mercy. And that's what God does for us. Somebody says, well, you know, I don't believe that because, you know, these Christians in church and they still don't do right. Because, you know, taking, doing right for the Christian takes time. You see what I'm saying? It takes time. Because we were born with this nature. And, you know, it's, it's, it takes time to wash it out, cleanse it out. It takes experience. It takes situations. It takes the word of God. It takes the teaching. It takes the, God speaking to us. It takes God chastising us. It takes God taking us for us to even hear. We are, we are born with our ears turned off from God. So it takes a time for God to penetrate that ears. We got so many other things in our ears, people, experience, feelings, wrong teaching, wrong attitude, all up in there. So it takes time for God to go in there. So yes, you're going to have people in the church that are kind of looking like they're not saved. Kind of looking. Mm -hmm. You're going to have people in the church. And I'm talking, I'm talking to those of you who put the church down. You're going to have people that are that are not there yet. They're not perfect. Nobody is there yet. But the fact is, whether you think that they are right or wrong, God still wants them. Hey, hey, that, that, that's, that's amazing to me. You know, you're not perfect and you got a whole lot of stuff going on. But guess what? God is still working with you. Don't tell me he's not working with you. Don't tell me that every time you do something crazy, if he doesn't knock at your door, don't tell me that he doesn't come and disrupt your sleep and turn things around to get your attention. He is work in this pandemic. He's working with the whole world. He's working with everybody. Nobody's getting by. I don't care if you have money, you're not getting by. A lot of rich people died. It wasn't only poor people that died from the ventilator. A lot of people with money died. It wasn't only black people that died. White people died too. Ain't nobody getting by. The glorious thing is he has declared to you not guilty. And he's given you the ability to live up to that. So you won't, you know, you won't be a repeated offender. When you're justified, there's no such thing as a repeated offender. He already cleared your books. He already cleared you. He already cleared you. Do you understand? Stop walking around and having your head hung down. You know, Paul was not such a, a, a nice person before, you know, he was Saul before he got saved. And, and, you know, he just did a lot of things, beat up women, children, whatever, whatever. But when he got saved, people kept bringing it up. You know how you meet somebody for a long time and they start bringing it up? Or some of the saints, they bring up, you know, yeah, I remember, I remember, yeah. You remember, they remember, the devil remember, the angel remember, mercy, everybody remembers. And Paul said, I know you know, and I know, but I am what I am now by what? The grace of God. Listen to me. I could go through this whole PowerPoint and give you a whole lot of information and you still walk away with guilt. As soon as somebody says something to you, you think they're talking about me? You think they're talking about you? That ain't settled yet. I, 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 I heard a message. I heard a message and I feel some kind of way. What kind of way are you feeling when Jesus fixed this thing for you? Why, why, why you live on guilt boulevard? It's an insult to the finished work of Calvary. You don't have to always jump and, and be afraid when he has settled. He, you are forgiven. You are released. All you have to do is believe and walk in it and take on the life of Christ. Take on the life of Christ. Take on the life of Christ. You get in the situation and your own nature said do this, but the life of Christ says do that. And the more you do that than this, is the more you become what God wants you to become. And you don't have to apologize or get bent out of shape. And every time something comes up, listen, my attitude is, yes, it's a possibility. It's a possibility that I could be a murderer. Some of color don't talk like that. Bishop don't talk like that. Listen to me. It's a possibility. It's a possibility that I could be involved in a lot of things. I know, I know it ain't never come to your mind. I, I know you're too wonderful. But I, I know what I am. And I'm glad that I'm conscious of it. It's a possibility that I could fail. 
It's a possibility that I could do something so horrible. It's, you see, when you live with that possibility, when you know this, you know what this is? Flesh. When you know that in this, up in this, lieth no good thing. When you're not trying to prove a point that you, you have it all together and trying to work it. And every time you try to prove you have it all together, you make a big boo-boo. But when you live saying, you, you know, it's a possibility that I could think that. Um, and, and you're envious. You know, it's a possibility I could have envy. envy. Envy is a part of the human nature. It's a possibility that I could have, you know, some anger issue. Why are you so shocked because somebody say you angry? I'm not angry. Well, well you, you must be, you know, an ET candidate. You're from Mars or someplace because every human being has the possibility to be angry. The Bible said be angry and sin not, which means anger is possibly in your spirit. So why are you so shocked? So, I'm not angry. You, you're just putting that on me. No, it ain't on you. It's in you. It's, it's in you. Stop talking about people putting it on you. It's in, it's up in there. It's up in there. It, you know, my mother, my mother used to say, I have gas up in there coming up, it coming up, it coming up. And then she would do this big belch, you know what I'm saying? And, and Jamaicans can belch in such a very interesting way. It's a big belch coming up. It's up in there. Why are you so shocked that somebody recognizes it? Just own it, own it, go down and say, yeah, well, you know, it's possible that I am angry. And I'm, I'm going to really look at that. Maybe, maybe this, is, this is causing me to be angry. Don't act like this is not in us. It is a possibility. And that's why God came down to say, I don't want you to live like this. I don't want you to walk like this. I'm going to give you the ability to live differently because those things will destroy you. So the more you say, honestly, that's what I, why are we so afraid to own this? If you don't own it, you can't enjoy him. If you don't own it, you can't be happy about justification. But you see, if you still think that you're innocent, then you're going to need somebody to defend you. And you're saying that God is an unjust judge. Why is he justifying you if you are if you're not if if, you, if if you're not guilty? Why is he setting you free? No, no, not now you're insulting God's judicial system. Not now you're you're getting too fresh. You're actually saying that God set up this system and it's not necessary. It is necessary for me to repent and say, God, I thank you that you're giving me your son so I could live right. What is right? Right is not your side or my side. Right is God's side. There is no right but God's right. There's no truth but God's truth. There's no way but God's way. So ladies and gentlemen, we were all born against God with the propensity, the genetic makeup not to warn him. And one day, and then listen, here it is, and I'm going to show you two videos and I'm finished. Here it is. Once he declares you not guilty and innocent and righteous because of his son, you will never have to be declared that again. It is done once and for all. Do you understand what I'm saying? Once and for all. So you don't have to keep going back. Justify me, Jesus. You know, we, we, we were raised in a church where they, they prayed, you know, they prayed about everything and, and, and they prayed a certain way. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and even though you got saved, you hear him just say, me, Jesus. And then there's a tune to it, you know? Save me, save me, save me, Jesus. I know, I know you all millennials don't know nothing about that, but it was a little tune. Ah, God, save me, save me. Now you've been saved. You see, and when we grew up, we got saved every Sunday because, you know, we did something wrong Saturday night, so we had to be saved Sunday morning. And we would kneel down and say, save me, Jesus. Come out here, save me, Lord. Wash me, Jesus. See, you don't have to say that about justification. Because if you say that, then you don't understand it. You don't understand that it just takes one declaration and it's over. All God has to say, you see that little rascal McCullough? I declared her innocent. And nobody can bring her to me again and say 
that she is not innocent and that the righteousness of God is not in her. It's done once and for all. Did you hear me? So don't be praying them any. I don't want to hear any of you all after tonight. If you did it, pray. Justify me, Jesus. No, no, no. Don't be doing that. It's done. It's fixed. It's permanent. It's forever. Now, sanctification now is a daily walk. Every day I need to be watched. But legally, it's a legal term. Legally. I belong to the Lord. Legally, it's signed, it's sealed, it's legal. All I want you to do is realize that the guilt that you carry is because you are carrying it ignorantly. You do not have to carry your past guilt. All you have to do is receive what Jesus did. That's all. It's simple. God, I thank you for dying for my sins. I thank you now. You, 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 listen to me. The Lord is merciful. You know why? If some people from the past came and start telling on us, we, many of us would run. We would run. But God is so good. He has, did I say wipe it? That you don't even remember. You don't even remember it. And the only reason why it made you cry and cry and cry, like you're still committing the crime. What, why are you still there? In God's eyes, it's over. Stop the whining and the miserable whining crying and rejoice in the finished work of Calvary. Now, let me just say this, and we're going to watch the two videos. This is my, this is my second closing, or third closing, one of them closings. But listen to this. You know why we can't accept this? Because we can't accept our depravity. We cannot believe that we are that wicked. You see, when you don't believe that you would go that low, then every time it comes up, you have a, a meltdown. You know what I mean? I just don't believe. I just don't believe I did that. I just... I just don't believe, I just, I just don't believe that's really me, that's really me. Oh, what? It's you and more. It's you, them, some more up in there. Something else up in there that if it came out, we would all leave the country. Hey, that's the thing that makes you not great. That's real tongue saints. That means I'm, I'm, I'm happy. You see what I'm saying? Just to know. That no matter what is inside of me, no matter how deep and how ugly, no matter how wicked, that God has fixed it so that I don't have to be bound to it. But if you believe that, oh, I, I just, you know, and, and if anybody, if anybody, if anybody, what? Listen, it ain't got nothing to do with anybody. This is personal. This is between you and God. And when you keep crying over the same thing that you did 50 years ago and can't believe, believe it, believe it. You did it, somebody else did it. Somebody going to do it. It's part of the human nature. Somebody did it and is doing it and liking it. And, and you know, the real thing that really makes us angry is that when we were doing it, we did like it. See? That's, that's, why, that's why we, that's why it's, it's so detestable right now. It is supposed to be detestable. It's supposed to be hateful. You're supposed to hate it. But just be honest and say, that's why I got caught in it. It, it, did, it touched a certain part of me that I didn't even think would respond. You know, it's like drinking. You never thought you would get drunk and take off all your clothes. You never thought that or do something crazy. And then you, when, when you get sober, oh, that's not me. I, I, I don't know what happened. That, that's never happened. Well, it's in Taking off clothes is in there. It's in there. It's in there. It's in there. You've always wanted to do it. It's wrapped up. It, I say, believe me. Just accept. It's it's Jamaican said up in there. It up in there. It's there. All it needed was an opportunity. That's all. Just a little stimulus. Just a little stimulus. And here it comes out. It comes out. It's, it's not me, that's not me, that's not me. You made me, it's not me, that's not like me. I was, I was raised differently. I, 
you know, I, I, I was brought up in a decent home and this is just not me. Okay. Keep lying to yourself. Because when you do that, you can't appreciate that he came all the way down just for me in spite of me. So that's why I praise him. That's why when I preach, I holler. I know you would like for me to be quiet, but I'm sorry. I, have, I am such a wretch that when I talk about him, I get excited to know he would want a wretch like me. Justification, declared innocent, righteous, because Jesus is righteousness. And when I believe in the finished work of Calvary, that righteousness is injected into me. And all I have to do is walk in it day by day, declaring, yes, I'm his. I'm legally his. I, have a, I had a rap sheet, but he cleaned me up, and now he's working on me to look like what I am or what he has called me to be, which is his child. Justification. All right. Before we show the video, you can unmute yourself and say what you have to say and then mute yourself. Did I say unmute and then mute? All right? But it's free. You have a question, you have a comment, you have something else to add. Some of you can teach it better than I can, but that's all I felt tonight is to let you know you have been declared. Who declared you? Who declared you? God. And I, re I receive it. Did you, hear what, did you hear what I said? I receive it. When I look back on my life, I say, oh, my God, you are so good. You are so kind. And you have not only lifted the guilt, but you have given me a new life, a new desire. You put something new in my thoughts so that I see things so differently than what I saw before. And when I think about what I used to like, and now I don't like it. What a miracle. Miracle. All right. Anybody? Don't be shy. You know, and if you all go in the chat room, you know, I don't go in chat rooms, so you better unmute yourself because I'll be looking all kinds of ways and missing, missing what you're saying. But if there's anything you want to say, I want you to get it in your spirit. You know why? Because people go to church and miss this. And they go astray and they backslide and they get saved and they backslide. And for years they don't walk in the freedom, the freedom, the freedom of knowing that Jesus has stamped his life on your life. And nobody can unstamp you. That's freedom. That's freedom. And now you have a relationship with him. Not perfect, but you have a relationship. So you can go to church and be free. And don't care how many people say, I know what you did last night. You know what I'm saying? Everybody did something last night. Everybody did something. If you didn't do it, you thought it, you felt it. But the thing is, we're legally his. Legally his. And stop trying to dress up yourself to make you look good. You know? It's, it's, like, it, it's like my mother always said, you cover your head, your feet will show. You cover your feet, your head will show. You can't, you can't look this good. Jesus is the righteous one. All right. Any, anybody would like to say something? I have a question. Who is that? Who, hi, Mariah. Is that your name? Yeah. Hi, darling. Hi. Um, how do you receive his forgiveness or the fact that like he declared you innocent? How do you receive it? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Okay. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you see, it's a package. It's a package. You, 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 you're regenerated. You, you, come to the, you come to the Lord, whether it's in your car, in your home, and wherever you are, and you say, God, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart that you're alive and that you died for my sin and that you love me and you want me and I receive you in my heart and in my life. And right now I'm saved, meaning that I am in a relationship with you. At that very moment, your rap sheet is clear. All the stuff that you did, thought you did, would like to do, 
did it over and over again, right there, he says, I forgive you. And he actually casts your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. There's a literal sea. There's a physical sea that he dropped all your stuff in, never to be remembered anymore. Now, if you if it's remembered, it's because you brought it up. But you have to believe it's faith. It's belie like when you sit on the chair, you believe that the chair is not going to break. That's why you sit down like that. You sit on the chair and you believe that the chair is going to hold you up. Well, you have to apply that same faith to what Jesus did for you, Mariah. When he hung on the cross, when he shed his blood, when he went down in the grave, when he conquered sin, when he rose, and when he went back to heaven, it was for Mariah. And if you believe it, at that very moment, you are declared innocent in his eyes, and Jesus now puts you in the right relationship with him. You understand me? Yeah, thank you. Now, did, did you accept Jesus? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so, so, so you, you believe that you can live and don't have to walk and feel guilty and bound? Do you believe that? Yeah, but I think I have a hard time forgiving myself. Well, listen, you don't have the ability. I hate when people say that because we ain't got no, I mean, we do not have the ability to forgive ourselves. We, we are creatures of guilt and we feel bad. So we cannot forgive ourselves. What we have to do is say, I am forgiven. God has forgiven me. I am accepted. I am received and I'm loved. Even if you don't feel it, you don't feel this, you say it. It is true. You understand what I'm saying? It's not something that you feel, it's something that you believe. You understand me, Mariah? Yeah. So you yeah. have to say it. When that feeling comes upon you of guilt and making you feel dirty, just tell the devil, I'm washed, I'm forgiven, and I'm justified. You have to speak the word of God. You have to receive the word of God. You have to put, it's like having a cut. Every time you look at that cut, you put the salve on it. You put it on it until it gets healed. Put the word on it until you can get lifted in your spirit. Put the word on it. The things that I'm telling you now, put it on it. Whenever you feel, whenever you feel that bad feeling or whenever you make a mistake or whenever somebody brings it up or the enemy brings it up to torment you, sit up in your bed and say, I am forgiven. I'm declared not, I'm declared innocent. I am justified. I am legally his child. And he wants me. With all of my raggedy self, he wants me. I declare if you say that and hold on to that, that feeling of depression will be lifted. You understand me, Mariah? Yeah, thank you. What did what did I say? That like I have to declare that I'm forgiven and that he accepts me for who I am and I said enough to believe it basically that's right that's right sweetheart that's right who else who else Bishop we have a question from you too I'll read it for you church culture can cause one to wear a mask how does one live authentically justified in a practical manner that's a wonderful question. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, YouTuber. Thank you. Because some of these people here wanted to ask it and they didn't have the courage to ask it. Uh, in the church, because we want behavioral modification, because we want people to behave a certain way. And, and, and I'm not talking about, you know, doing things right in, in the sense, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's like your child. It's like your child going to school. You have to sit down to learn. Those are those are certain things. But I'm talking about living godly. I'm talking about living righteous. And people come to church and live double lives because they are not taught that their sins are forgiven and that they're legally his, and that there's a difference between justification and sanctification. Let me explain to you. There's a difference between the wedding and the marriage. The wedding and the marriage, okay? You have this big wedding, big wedding. Everything big, big cake, big, big everything, big chicken, big everything. Everything big, 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 big. still paying for it. But now you have to live with the person. 
You're legally his. He's legally yours. You got the papers. You got the papers. The, the preacher signs it. It's the, the license is yours. That's legal. But that's just the beginning. It's declared to the world. This is Mr. and Mrs. The preacher says, for the first time or for the 20th time, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. so-and-so. That's legal. But that ain't, that's just the beginning. Now, and you're entitled to everything. You're entitled to everything. If he dropped dead that day, you got the house, the car, and, and the debt, and everything else. Everything that he got is yours. But now you have to live every day. There's a difference between justification and sanctification, which means now, now you got to get to know him. And he has to get to know you. Now, now, now you wake up and find out, you wake up and find out that, you know, things are not the way you thought it would be. But you're married. You know, you, you didn't know his, his toes cross. He, and, and, and he didn't know that, you know, when, when he saw you with all that shape, that part of it was something you put on. He, oh, the reality now, the reality. Now you have to walk every day so that you can grow with him, so you can become. He said, okay, so th this is who you are. This is what's going to happen. We're going to do this together. We're going to change that. Now you start growing and changing and becoming. So justification is when you're declared, like the, the wedding. This is a legal wedding. This is your legal husband. This is your legal wife. You're legally God's child. But now you got to live it out. You got to live it out. And the living it out will look like contradiction. You don't change overnight like that. It takes time. That's why you, you, and so people will say, you're not changed or you hide or you cover. No, come to the Lord and come to Bible study and let the Lord wash you and let the word fix you. Some things will be fixed immediately and some things will take time. So that's a teaching that you need. You need to know what sanctification is so you don't have to live a double life. All right? Anybody else? Uh, yes, hi, Bishop. It's Melanie. I just wanted to say that I'm so glad that you um, pointed out an excellent point about the fact of us not being able to forgive ourselves. I think a lot of us are stuck on that, you know, not being able to forgive ourselves. Um, I believe that that really freed, freed a lot of people that just don't want to say, but it freed me, you know, it's, it freed me. So I, I thank you for that. If you could forgive yourself, what do you need Jesus for? What do you need him for? Stop saying those worldly things. You go to the psychologist, or you'll feel better if you forgive yourself, and then you have to take a pill. Listen to me. You cannot forgive yourself. You don't have the power. That's why you go to Jesus. That's why you pray. That's why you say, Lord, help me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, lift me. Lord, have mercy. If you couldn't forgive yourself, you wouldn't even come to church. You just keep forgiving yourself and getting better and getting cuter and sweeter and prettier and happier and brighter. What? None of that happens without God. That's why you need, you need Jesus in your life. He is the one that can help you to come out of guilt and shame and shame and shame and more shame. You understand? And when you realize that you have been delivered, you raise your, that's why people cry and worship and you get in service and we just worship the Lord and praise him. And some of us jump on one leg because look what the Lord has done. My God, he healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. That's why people praise the Lord. That's why charismatic people get like that because the knowledge that I'm free is overwhelming. Anybody else? God bless you, Bishop. I just want to say that this was such an on-time word. So many people have been prophesying and speaking during this time and pandemic, but this was a heart. This was a message to and from the heart of God into our hearts. This was, a, this was surely a thus saith the Lord 
if we have ever heard it. This is truly thus saith the Lord. And the fact that you ministered out of your spirit means even more that this is on the mind of God. This is the mind of God for his people, that you are justified. And I just want to say, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Orlando. Anyone else? We have another question from uh, YouTube Bishop. Is wanting to forgive ourselves a form of pride? Very much so. Whoever asked that question, I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Thank you so much. Because as again, all them people sitting up looking at my face should have asked it. But thank you, 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 thank you. Listen to me. As I said before, and I want you to hear me carefully. I have no ability to forgive myself of something that I can't help myself. <laughs> Forgiveness means I can help myself. Okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going, well, how come I end up doing it? How, this is six months later. Oh, I, 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 I'm fine. It, it's been a year, it's been a year. What? And something triggers. It's just like having a, an, an illness, you know, some kind of illness and you're doing well, you're doing well, and it goes into what? Remission. But a bad cold, a COVID, what do they say about the COVID? That people who have what? Those pre-existing, listen to the language, pre-existing conditions made them susceptible to contracting the disease. Well, we have a pre-existing condition called sin that will break down and cause us to be attracted to all kinds of stuff. It's pre-existing. It's already there. You can't bathe it. You can't perfume it. You can't get a weave, a new hairdo, shave it off, put it on. You can't go and do yoga and exercise. It's up in there too bad, you all. It's up in your nature. It's past your tissues. It's down in your DNA. And it takes the blood of Jesus. That's why he had to come. It takes the, it takes the DNA of the Holy Ghost to come and shift that thing in your mind and Put a new desire in your heart so that you can see it and don't want it. And even if you go and touch it again, if you have a, a, a pulling back. Because whom the son sets free, he or she is free indeed. This is why the church is in trouble. We have, told, we have taught worldly ideas. Just get yourself together. We call it empowerment, you know. And, 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 and I believe in economic empowerment. Yeah, but what you, ain't nobody empowered now. We're waiting for a stimulus. Ain't nobody empowered. Uh-uh. We all in trouble. You need more than just economic empowerment to get through an oppressive time. You understand? Yeah. It, it, you, you, need, you need to understand. This is an inward thing that affects everything on the outside. And the church is the reason, one of the reasons, and you can get mad with me all you want to shut it down, turn it off. The reason why we're in trouble is because the church failed to teach these solid foundational truths. And people can go in and out and in and out confused, don't know what they believe. A Christian today, not a Christian tomorrow. An atheist tomorrow, believe in that because they were anchored in the truth. You could not get me to go anywhere else so I could pick up guilt again. Where can I go and wake up in the morning and feel free? Knowing where I've been and knowing what I've done, but I can wake up and say, I'm free in the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. We sing the song, I'm free no longer by sin I'm bound. His precious blood satisfies me this freedom in Jesus I found. We left him out of the picture. We left his finished work. We left what he's accomplished. And people were left to their own imagination and were left to entertainment. We brought all kinds of mess in the church where people just sang and rocked and being entertained. And when a, a wind of pandemic comes, they have nothing to stand on. And we are guilty. The church is under indictment because we dropped the word are suffering right now.
should have been free. You should have gotten up and said, yes, like Paul. Yes, I did it. But I am what I am now. Look at me. Look at me. By the blood of Jesus. Look at me. I know. I, I know I used to. But look at me. The chains have been broken. Mine is different. And I rejoice in the newness of life. That's what we're supposed to teach and build you up in your most holy faith. Strengthen you so that you can rise up and take the world and bring the gospel and build the kingdom and further the kingdom of God. Anybody else? Yes, Bishop McCullough. This is uh, Minister Livingston from Grace United Methodist Church. Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, I just want to say thank you very much. This is confirmation, but I do want to ask, I know what you said. I did have a dream about someone that I know that I forgave, but maybe it's in my mind subconsciously because at the end of the dream, I had to reintroduce myself and we shook hands. But in the dream, it was almost as if the camera or some focus went into the handshake. And it said that, then I heard this voice said, you are forgiven. Could it be that I was thinking that I needed to forgive myself? Okay, here we go. I don't know why we can't get past this because it's been so embedded in secular teachings and in the schools and whatever, and in psychology. Listen, I wouldn't care what the devil says to me today. God has forgiven me. Now, the memory of it may be distasteful. And as David said, my sin is ever before me. But David knew he was forgiven and restored. There's no more. When you're justified, justification, what, what, what we need now is to walk in sanctification. That's a teaching that doesn't exist in the church. As I talked about the marriage, you're in a relationship now. You're in it. You're in it. Did you hear what I said? You're in it. You're in it. When he snatched you from sin and, and, and called you by your name, the Bible said you were chosen before the foundation of the world. Before you were in your mama's womb, God wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life. So even if it took 20, 30, 40 years for you to get the message, he you are not going to leave here because if he wants you, he will not let you go. He's going to go after you. So you're in it. You're in it. You're in it. Tell yourself you're in it. You're in it. You're in it. Now you have to walk in it and that's sanctification now you have to take on the life of christ which means now you have to read his word obey him sanctification is just obedience every day whatever he tells me to do obey him you know what you know what he told me uh, uh, uh reverend livingston that's your name right reverend yes Liv yes you know what he told me the other day? After all these years that I think, you know what I'm saying? You know how you get beside yourself and think, you know, you're okay. And he told me just two days ago in my private devotion, he said, you have to do me to know me. To know me, you have to do me. And that's, that's, what, that's what's wrong with the church. We don't want to do him. If you want to know him, do him. That means now when you're walking with him, just obey him. Just obey him. There are things that he's working out in our lives. So don't think that because it has to be worked out that you are not forgiven. He does not mess with people he doesn't want. He's not going to keep working on you and talking to you and pulling you along if he doesn't want to. He doesn't chastise bastards. You're a legal child. And you need to tell yourself that. Amen. You got it? Yes, Bishop, thank you. You're welcome. Any, anybody else? Yes, ma'am. We have some more questions coming in. This one's from Facebook Live from Stefan. If a person passes from this life and does not have a chance to hear the word, do they have a chance to be saved? All right, now it depends on what you mean by hear the word, all right? Because if, if, if you're saying that they didn't hear the word in church, they didn't hear the word, um, somebody didn't tell them the word, we don't know. We think that it has to be a certain way. You understand what I'm saying? 
God has a way of speaking to people in more ways than one. That nobody will go to heaven and say they never heard the word or they never heard about God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. So even if they didn't hear the word, they can see God in nature. What about, what about the cavemen? What about the, the people that lived in caves? What about the prehistoric man? Will they be able, God reveals himself to where you are in your situation. So we don't know how God speaks and reveals himself to people. The thief on the cross did not have catechism class. The thief on the cross did not have Bible study. The thief on the cross did not hear, you know, wasn't sitting in church on a Sunday morning, but instantly all he had to do was repent. So when you get in your kingdom, so we, 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 need, we need to know that if the person, if a person denounced and curses God and said, I don't want God, I don't believe there's a God, you know, and I would rather go to hell than believe in God. That's a different story. But this is a personal salvation and God reveals himself to us personally. And we don't know. We don't know. Even people in a coma, we don't know. Thank you, Bishop. And we have one uh, next question from Facebook. How can I fight the spirit of loneliness? Oh. Oh. All right. Um. It depends on, it depends on what you're expecting, what you want. You know what I'm saying? Um, it depends on where you are. If you feel like you, you, you would like to have companionship or a partnership, because I don't know what that means anymore. Um, but if you feel like you don't want to live alone and that's a prevailing thought. If you feel like, you know, being alone is, 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 is just demeaning you and you're desperate. You got to have somebody in your life, somebody, somebody in your, in your space. Then, then loneliness is, is, is something that you, you, you crave, you want to get rid of, you want to get rid of it, but you have to go to the Lord and fix that. You have to go to the Lord and say to the Lord, I'm, I'm lonely. And I, and I want to have relationship. Now, it could be that you do have relationship. It could be that you have friends and people in your life that he has put, but maybe you want relationship a certain way. And that's not what the way God wants you to have it right now. It depends on what you want, why you're lonely. If you feel like you got to have somebody, you know, with you physically, and you don't have that right now, you're going to be lonely. But suppose God is saying, you don't, you don't want, I don't want you to have anybody physically, but I'm going to give you friends. That's why the body of Christ is so powerful. That's why he puts us in a body of Christ. We should not be alienated. Many times we alienate ourselves and we isolate ourselves. What church do you go to? Who is your friend? What kind of relationship do you have? The body of Christ is supposed to help us through these difficult moments. But maybe your loneliness is, 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 is around the fact that you want somebody personal, somebody intimate, somebody in your life right now. I don't know. You go to God and ask him why he or she or it ain't there. You know, ask him why, 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 why nothing there. But does it mean that you don't have people? It doesn't mean that you don't have have people around you and ask God to connect you to the right people so that you won't be isolated. Isolation is a trick of the enemy. He loves for people of God to be what? Isolated so he can suck the life out of you. That's why he says that many members were one body, joint supplying joint, people helping people, community, Where's your community? Are you in a church community? So well, there ain't no church. Yes, there is. This is church right here. Who, who do you have to go to when you're in trouble? Who do you talk to? Who do you laugh with? Who do you have friendship with? So it depends on what you want, why you feel lonely. 
I don't think no no. Shut up. Ain't got nothing to do with me. Let me just keep that. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Good, Bishop. You're always taking care of me, girl. Thank you so much. Thank you. Keep me tight. Anybody else? <laughs> Doesn't take much for me to. Yeah. Anybody else? Come on, ask your questions. And then we're just going to show that last video, uh, Pastor Brown, the last one, okay? But anybody else? Anybody else on Facebook? On, on, yes, we, we just got one more. We just got one more from Facebook. Is it that when we say forgive myself, we mean receive and accept Jesus' forgiveness? That If that's what you mean, then say that. Because mm -hmm. language is powerful. Because as long as you put self in it, there's no real freedom. Just say, I receive the forgiveness that God loves me, he wants me, and he will not, here, 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 here it is. He will never throw me away. You have to say that. Don't be talking about, I receive his forgiveness because I forgive myself. That's confusion. Take self out of there. Take self, clear the way and say, God, you're the one. You're the one who died for me. And I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Because left up to myself, I don't like, when I wrote the book, I hate myself. A lot of Christians won't buy it. You know why they won't buy that book? Because they believe that they don't hate themselves. Yes, they do. They, they hate God. They hate what he's doing. They whatever. I check people in this pandemic. They hate everything. The thing about it is I must surrender. Lord, I surrender everything to you because I could not do what you did on Calvary. I could not shed my own blood to cleanse my own sin. Just say it that way. Because if you say that, that's what you mean. Well, say what you mean. And don't let the enemy be putting self in there. Because when you fail, you're going to get depressed because self was up in there. But when you fail, you know that you're still forgiven and he'll pick you up out of it. Put him in his rightful place. Jesus, just give him the credit now. Go ahead. Sorry. Yes. One last one. Yes, oh, yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Bishop. No, no, I'm fine. Oh, okay. One more from Facebook. This one is about timing, God's timing. I see. Bishop, why is timing so important? I'm a person of time and I'm always on time, but sometimes things just take so long. Yeah, which means that sometimes God just takes so long. That's what that means. Um, because God doesn't deal with a 24 hour clock. And, and there are things that he's working out. You know, this, this, this 21st century church does not like to wait. You know, everything is fast. And I can understand it, you know. Um, there, there's a certain um, there's a certain thing that I support on 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 my on my on the internet or whatever, and it's so convenient, you know. As soon as I press it, my name comes up. Press it, my address comes up. Press it, you know, my zip code comes up. One, two, three. Look how fast that is. That's how we want God to do for us. We're, we're fast and in a hurry because we want the thing, but we don't want the character. We want the power, but we don't want the change in us. And when a person's character is not molded for the assignment, it's the ugliest thing in the world. When a person has not allowed God to season them and put them in a position when they're placed. The Bible said, don't promote a novice. You know what that means? You don't know nothing. And God is taking us through a period of discipleship. We have to learn. Why, why did God anoint David at 17 and didn't put him on the throne until 17 years later? Why? He was strong. He was powerful. No, he had to be tempered. 17 years of training so that when he got to the palace, 
He would be able to have an army. He would be able to run a, 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 a praise, a choir. He would be able to bring praise and music and worship to his people. All of that happened when he was being a fugitive, running, running, hungry, hiding, being chastened by Saul. He was being made. So when he got there, he knew what to do. So we can't take it because we're on the clock, on the clock, we're like robots. It must happen now. It must happen now. Listen to me. You're going to frustrate yourself. I'm take it from an old woman. You're going to frustrate yourself. Just because he said it here, it's not going to happen. There is the call. There is the preparation and there's the execution. There is the call. There is a preparation and there is an execution. And the preparation is always longer, a longer period of time. So when we get to execute, we won't be an, an, an insult to the kingdom of God. And then other people are involved. Other people are involved. He's going to give you this, but he has to bring Susie May. And Susie May is out of her mind right now. It's going to take a little time for Susie May to get her mind together. Or he's bringing somebody and that person isn't born yet. He knows what he's doing. The thing is trust. The thing is trust. He is not on your time clock. He's working out things that we don't understand. And when we get there, we will have such a calm and a peace. And here is the clincher. It won't matter that much. When it matters too much, we're out of time. When we are bent out of shape because it didn't work out the way we want to, it's because it means too much. When you wait on God, it happens, and it, you, you, you know, thank you, Father. Somebody have to say, do you know what the Lord just did? Yeah, thank you, Jesus, glory to God. Because you know why? It's in his rightful place. So just let God have his way. I know that might not be comforting, but what can I tell you? Um, got another question. You talked earlier about the memory of our mistakes. How do we deal with the memories that seem to haunt us? Okay. Um, the memory comes as, um, as a stabilizer. What, what do I mean by that? David said, the sin is ever before me. What does that mean? You never heard of another Bathsheba. That thing fixed him. All he has to do is think and he, he goes somewhere and sit down. Even if he saw another bat and another Sheba coming, he goes somewhere and sit down. Because that thing comes to be a marker. Some things happen in our lives Every now and then the Lord has to stir it to, so that we would never even think. Some things that happen to me, even if I smell it, I start shaking, start shaking. Jesus, Lord, have mercy. I'm so glad that I'm not there. I'm so, you don't know how much. Jesus, Jesus. You talk about singing? Or you, you have a bad dream and, and, and you, you think you're still in it and you wake up and find, oh my God, I'm, not, I'm over. Listen to me. So those things come to just remind you, this is not where you will ever be again or where you should ever be again. So rejoice in that. Rejoice that that comes to keep you in the path of righteousness. Okay? Okay, you've got the questions just coming in on Facebook. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for the questions, off, you know, because, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. I don't know. How do we pray effectively? How do we stir up our spiritual gifts? How do we pray effectively? Um, the, to pray effectively is to pray the will of God. And you pray the will of God because you pray the word of God. Okay? And when you pray the word of God, the Bible said we don't even know what to pray for. But the spirit knows exactly what to pray. Now, many of us pray and claim all the promises. All the promises are mine. Everything is mine. When, again, you have to deal with timing, you have to deal with people, you have to deal with purpose. There's so many things that God is working out that that's not, it's not time 
for you to have that, but it's time for you to have this. So when you pray the will of God and pray the word of God, the word of God, and, and one thing I say to the Lord, God, if this, uh, you take the desire out of my heart, you said you would give me the desire. And if I trust you and believe you, I'm going to pray. I want to be in agreement with you, whatever it is that you want. Now, if he says you're going to go to school, start praying. God, you said I'm going to go to school. Is it now? Is it later? What school? But I'm praying the will of God. That may not happen right away, but I know he wants me to go to school. So I keep praying and thanking him for it until he gives it to me. So pray the word of God and pray what God has given you in your heart to pray for. Not praying because everybody else is doing it and I want this and I want that and I feel that. No, no, no. This is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will and his will is his word, we know that he hears us. We will have the petition that we desire of him. Stop praying. Stop, you know, we just, we just want everything. And the Lord, I said, this is, this is just not, you know, take this little pencil right here. See this little fan right here? Don't you want no white fan? Just thank me for the, this pink fan. I don't like pink. Like it. That's what it is. Like it. Learn to like it. I like pink. And when you agree with God, you have a purpose. Because you know that you're lined up with his purpose. And he's not going to do anything in your life to destroy you. Yes, ma'am. I'll take two more and then we do this video because they're getting tired. Some people are scrapping their head and yawning. I know it's almost time to go. So, all right. Yes, yes. I think that's it. There was one more about, I'm just trying to find it because so many were coming in. How do you motivate your obedience? That's it. These are wonderful questions. Thank you, YouTubers. Thank you. How do you motivate your obedience? You know, we, we can't motivate our obedience because we don't want to obey. We don't want to obey. If, if I say to everybody right here, unmute yourself one, one, one at a time and just talk and reflect. Somebody is not going to unmute them. It's just natural. The only way to obey is to hear the word and apply the word. The word of God is the motivating factor. When you hear it, apply it. When you hear it, even if it's uncomfortable, there's a motivation. Even if it's ouch, ouch, just do it. To know him is to do him. So the best thing to do is when you hear it, just do it. Well, I, it doesn't make sense to me. I'm, he's not asking you to intellectualize it. He's just asking you to submit to it. Because some of us, are too, we think too well. We just, our brains are just, we need to just put in the glass and glorify, put a crown on the glass, hold up the glass with the brain and just bow down and worship it because we think that we, we know more than God. The best way to get along with God is to say, yes, Lord. <laughs> That's the best way. Even if you don't feel it, just say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And this is the final one, Bishop. How does one guard against weariness and fighting spiritual battles continually when yes. you're being stretched and seemingly feeling isolated? Ah, that's the word right there. You, you, you know, isolation is a thing that will cause you to be worn out. That's why the Bible said one can chase a thousand. And two can put 10,000 to a flight. You don't need a whole lot of people. There's somebody that God will put in your life that you can call. And that person will pray. Somebody that will intercede. Somebody of like spirit. You know, somebody that's not going to do, do you any damage. Don't isolate yourself. And that's what has happened to the church. That's why God put us in this pandemic. We were ignoring each other, abusing each other, and avoiding each other. Now some of us would be so glad to see each other. You know, when we see each other, we don't even know what we're going to do. Even though some of you, whatever. Because when you isolate yourself, you leave yourself helpless. And the enemy says, oh, I've got me a guinea pig right here. You need somebody to pray for you. I'm just going to tell you this one little story, and then I'm, I'm going to do the video. I remember I was going through a very difficult time, very difficult time in my life. And I went to church. And... 
the deacon, there was a deacon who was a prayer, became a presiding bishop later. But, but Deacon Jenkins was a, was a man of prayer. I mean, you know, when you, when you hear a man pray, and when I say pray, I mean pray. I was so down and out, down and out, out and down that I just went and knelt right next to him. And I rode on his prayer. Oh my God. That man prayed me out of my depression. That's why the Bible said we are helpers one of another. Call somebody that you know will pray. You know what I'm saying? They're, sometimes you turn on the television and you hear a good word and that brings you up. But we're too separate. People are too isolated. The church was not meant to be individualistic in, 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 its, in its connection. I have my Holy Ghost and you have your Holy Ghost. No, we are supposed to be fitly joined together. I should be able to call Lashley, and you know I do, and say pray. And now sometimes I, I, I overslept. I did. Sometimes I oversleep and I didn't hear the phone. And so she called me. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I, I jump up, you know, pray. Do you know how strengthening that is? Do you, know, do you know what that does to you when you don't know what to say for yourself? You weren't meant to be out there by yourself. Don't let the devil fool you. There's somebody that can pray and you can get a second win and go back. And that's what I'm praying for you, streamer. I'm praying that you will find a godly person to walk with you through this difficult time. Amen. All right. We're going, we're going to go back to justification. This was all justification. You know, the last um, 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 video. Sorry. Sorry, Pastor. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. The word justified means that you and I stand before God acceptable, spotless, pure, and without sin. That God looks at us and says, there is no sin in that man. There is no sin in that woman. That he looks at us and we are now just in his sight. So all the blasphemy that we've done by choosing stuff over God, all the blasphemy that we've lived in by saying my way is better than God, all the blatant sin of saying creation is better than God is removed and God sees us as just. Much more than having now been justified by his blood. This is great news. Nothing about your effort in that text at all. Nothing about your might, your religious stamina, your morality, your cleaning yourself up. You have been justified by an act of God. Bottom line, you have not earned right standing in front of God by your effort or your cleaning up of your life. We have been made pure standing blameless in front of God, not because of any kind of religious or moral pursuit, but because Christ died. And in his death, he absorbed all of God's wrath for you and I. And that's why the Bible says that for the children of God, we are not appointed to suffer wrath. Because the wrath bestowed upon you and I was absorbed by Christ's death. After hearing that, you should be convinced. And, and just before we turn it over to, um, to, to Reverend Trish or Pastor Lashley, one of the reasons why we possibly, you know, have this problem about forgiving ourselves is because sometimes we just don't want to give up what we're doing. And when you don't want to give it up, you don't want to, you don't want to be forgiven. And then, you know, you want to forgive yourself. No, no, no. When you want to surrender fully to the Lord, you can say, God, I accept. It's like somebody telling you, run. 
The bear is coming after you. Run. This is your chance. And you stand there and say, well, you know, um, I'll run when I get ready. No, you want to be bitten. But when you're ready to, to see your freedom and accept what God has done, you embrace it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know that I'm, I've been rotten, but thank you. I, I appreciate it, and I love it. So walk away from here knowing you're justified, you've been declared innocent, and through the righteousness of Christ, you stand before him as a legal child. And now sanctification is going to work out the kinks. So go with that for the rest of your life. God bless you. Let's just wave and put our hands together for Bishop. Put your hands together for Bishop. We thank you so much. She took her time with us tonight. We were just literally sitting at her feet. And I know that we've been tremendously blessed by this teaching and that this, this, this weight of guilt and shame has been lifted. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop, as always, an outstanding job. Please stay with me, everyone. It is biblical to thank our teacher. And we just need, we don't charge anything. Bishop just loves to do this. She just wants to make sure that people are rooted and grounded in their faith. And so we wanna, we wanna raise a love offering right now. We're gonna put the information on the screen. And I know you've been blessed and I want your offering to reflect it. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for her, this mighty woman of God, taking her time to break the bread of life with all of us and we are grateful so here's the information the cash app is on the screen uh you see it we also can zell her i call her zelly i don't know what her name is but it is zell um at, at and you see that right on the screen uh pastor dan if you'll keep that up overseer if you'll give us just a little song while we lift this offering it would be great we'll be great for it and you all can just show your gratitude we can all show our gratitude by blessing Precious Gem Ministries at this time. Just take your step forward. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bow, no more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free, I am free, praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bow, no more chains holding me, my soul is resting, it's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Reverend Trish, um, are we turning it over to Pastor Lashley? I'm sorry, I was getting my little thing together here on my phone. Pastor Lashley, will you will you give us greetings as we prepare to close out? And Pastor Dan will come after Pastor Lashley and give us the benediction. Thank you. Yes, 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 indeed. What an awesome time. What an awesome night. Thank you, thank you so much, Bishop, for taking your time. And for just as, as uh, the gentleman said, talking to us from the heart of God, really and truly appreciate. Didn't rush, didn't say, oh, I have to have one more question. And I know we got more than we thought we would tonight. You know what I'm saying? There's just so much in the word that needs to be imparted. And I just want to take this personal opportunity to say thank you so much. I ate sumptuously, amen. Thank you for those who are bold enough to ask questions because every time you ask a question, you help somebody else to get it. Amen. And Bishop didn't say, I told you already, she repeated and she went over and she's on an illustration. I just thank God for the wisdom of God 
that is on her tongue tonight. It's always a blessing to hang out with my Beth Rafa family. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity. I hope we could squeeze one more in <clears throat> soon. Praise the Lord. But I just want to put that out there. But I want to say thank you again, Bishop. It's good to see all my friends. And thank you, Grace, for coming out. Little Mariah, thank you for asking those questions. God bless you. God bless you. This was wonderful. Wonderful. Pastor Lashley, where's my little um, um, prayer, prayer son? My retreat, baby, my prayer retreat, baby. Oh, Nadia, seven. You should see him now. He just turned oh, four. Four. Oh, four. He just turned four. Nadia, are you on? She's streaming. Oh, my goodness. He's adorable. He's doing wonderful, Bishop. Oh, when he preaches, he has a little Bible. And I'm going to okay. send you a little video of him. <laughs> okay. That's it, Dan, I guess. Yes. Amen. Thank God. you for your giving. Thank you for your giving. Thank you so much for your giving. I know you all gave $50,000. Thank you so much, President. <laughs> That's Amen. right, Bishop. Amen. God bless you, Bishop. Thank you so much for such a powerful class on tonight. And thanks again to Grace and to Pastor Lashley. God bless you to all the saints of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight for this time spent in your presence around your word. Thank you, God, that you have given us your word to grow, to develop, to become more and more like you. And as we always say, Lord, until Christ be formed in us, we continue to eat your word, to digest your word, to love your word. We thank you, God, for the doctrine of justification. We are justified by faith. Thank you, Lord, how you use your servant to break this word down to us and make it palatable so that we can eat and enjoy and above all things to live out the truth of your word. Bless your servant tonight, O oh God. Bless our bishop. Bless her beyond measure. Father God, will you continue to use her. And I pray that as you use her, you continue to strengthen her, to replenish, to give back, O oh God, to strengthen her resolve, to cover her, to meet every need in her life. And we thank you for what you're doing. Father, bless every home tonight. Everyone that came out tonight, Lord, to listen to your word, I pray that you will open doors that man can't close and close doors that man cannot open. Bless your children, Lord. And as we eat, as we, live, as we, as we listen to your word, give it to us, Lord, to have a desire, not just to be hearers only, but doers also. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, and present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy to the immortal, the invisible, the only wise God, be all glory and majesty, dominion and power now henceforth until Jesus come. And the saints say, Amen. Bless you all. Bless you. Thanks again, Bishop. A wonderful night. Bye-bye.